So let's talk about some basics of amino acids. Uh, there's a backbone is the same for all amino acids. So the side chain differs from one amino acid to the next, but the nitrogen is always a part of the amino acid uh, or in, in the protein group. So you can see in the lower left-hand corner, the amine group and the acid group represented by blue and yellow <clears throat> on a side chain that can vary. And then you see over on the right, various shapes of different amino acids. This gives you a better pictorial representation of how you can put these various building blocks together and how our body actually does that too when we're taking different amino acids and putting them into other amino acids. So when we think of amino acids, we automatically start to think in terms of protein and we start to think in terms of muscle building, but amino acids play a lot of different roles in the body, including as precursors to neurotransmitters like tryptophan to serotonin and tryptophan to nicotinic acid, otherwise known as vitamin B3. Tyrosine, we're all familiar with, is also involved in catecholamine neurotransmitters, as well as uh, thyroid hormones and melanin, which is a skin pigment, and uh, lysine as a precursor to carnitine, cysteine as a precursor to taurine, arginine, uh, for its role in nitric oxide, glycine <clears throat> as uh, part of the heme and the hemoglobin, and on and on. So there's a lot of roles uh, that we're going to explore uh, beyond even this. So what are our food sources and digestion of that? Food sources would include milk and, of course, milk byproducts like whey protein, uh, legumes like soy and pea, eggs, gelatin in synthesized nature identical forms and other forms as well. So building, amino acids form the building blocks of protein, but also of hormones and antioxidants and neurotransmitters. So they have a vast role to play in the body. And the word protein comes from the Greek word, which is proteus, which is of prime importance, the essential role of protein in the body. So uh, amino acids uh, are rapidly absorbed without requiring digestion, as proteins do, and can be used before, during, or after exercise to fuel and maintain muscles. And we'll get into more of those details in a little bit. So there are nine essential amino acids that must come from the diet, and that would be exogenous sources from outside the body. And then there are 11 non-essential amino acids that can be made in the body from these other nine, and that is known as endogenous production or from within the body. So uh, combined, uh, about 20, and in some population groups, maybe 21 uh, amino acids that are uh, important in human nutrition. So some non-essential amino acids can be conditionally essential for some populations, which we'll cover in a little bit. So the National Academy of Sciences for Adults has established certain uh, RDA recommendations uh, for adequacy for indispensable amino acids, roughly five grams uh, in a serving. Uh, that's not necessarily what you need in a day or for a meal, but uh, it's important to note that competitive athletes and uh, people engaged in resistance training may need to double these amounts. And the blue ones on your screen, the isoleucine, the leucine, and the valine, are the branched chain amino acids, which we'll cover in a moment. So the amino acid composition of major food protein groups uh, can vary quite a bit. And you see over on the left, you got eggs and milk, which represent obviously uh, animal-based sources of, of uh, protein. And then you have navy beans in the center and whole wheat flour. We don't tend to think of whole wheat flour as a source of protein. Uh, it does have some. And then again, this is milligrams per gram of protein. But you'll notice here that lysine is low in whole wheat flour, but higher in navy beans, and methionine and cysteine is higher in whole wheat flour and lower in navy beans. You see that with the blue arrows in the center of your screen. So combining this together, if one is eating a vegan or vegetarian diet, allows for adequate coverage of amino acids to cover our protein needs. Now, also, it's important to know that plant protein powders can also achieve complete amino acid profiles. You have here at the top of this bar the plant-based uh, amino acids, and you can have a mixed diet. They do vary a bit, animal-derived, but 
it's not as important when you get to a certain adequacy of protein, which we'll cover in a moment. The, um, uh, the general breakdown is uh, fairly similar. You'll notice that over here on the plant base, you say 13.9%. That relates to arginine, which is more represented in a higher amounts in a plant-based but diet compared to mixed or animal derived. But you also see um, in the um, uh, lysine at the bottom there and animal derived is a bit higher than in the plant-based. So there's some trade-off back and forth in that regard. So we're gonna cover some basics of amino, of uh, protein digestion. Uh, and then we'll cover some of the details of that in a greater uh, amount later on. So protein digestion starts in the stomach. Uh, hydrochloric acid and the enzyme pepsin is required for that initial breakdown. Then it exits the stomach, goes into the small intestine. The pancreas secretes enzymes that digest proteins and carbohydrates and fats. In this case, we're only gonna focus on the pancreas aspect of protein digestion. The small intestine is a major site of protein digestion. So it's not in the stomach, not in the large intestine, not in the mouth, it's in the small intestine where most of our uh, protein digestion and amino acid absorption occurs. And indeed, the small intestine where most of our nutrient absorption occurs, period. So uh, some uh, is lost in the stools, but the final digestion of peptides and tripeptides, dipeptides and tripeptides, which are small chunks of, of, uh, of uh, amino acid molecules, which we'll cover in a moment, are, uh, occurs inside intestines, and then they're absorbed into the blood, they travel to the liver, and the liver regulates the distribution of amino acids to the rest of the body. So it's a very important aspect of this, is to understand that the liver takes the building blocks and can help reassemble them and send them out where they're needed throughout the body. So amino acids from foods. Well, we have digestion of dietary proteins. They are complicated. It's a lengthy process, it begins in the stomach and goes throughout the small intestine and multiple enzymes are involved. So the digestion of dietary proteins helps, stomach acid helps, uh, that's generally a low pH around a pH of two give or take, maybe three, depending on the individual, of course. And enzymes in the stomach, pepsin, and in the intestines, pancreatic protease, which would be found in pancreatic enzymes. So digestion dietary proteins, the uh, acid in the stomach and the pepsin that actually does the work, uh, helps to unwind the proteins and the negatively charged side chains and breaks the bonds between aminos in certain places. And then in the small intestine, which is a more alkaline environment, this is where the pancreas secretes uh, proteases such as trypsin, which helps to break apart positively charged side chains. Now, we also are familiar with plant enzymes, proteases of various kinds found in a variety of products. Those can digest protein in a wide range of pH. And there's different ones that are often put together in different products that will help to maximize the breakdown of protein. And they can help compensate for those that may have low stomach acid. Important thing to note is that oral pancreatic enzymes can inhibit internal production of our own enzymes. So there are people that take pancreatic enzymes sometimes in large amounts, and that uh, may be helpful in some cases, or at least temporarily, but sometimes can be an issue. So when we have amino acids uh, from foods, uh, digestion uh, uh, occurs. Uh, other essential functions of adequate stomach acid is an acidic immune barrier where we can help to keep uh, pathogens uh, from entering into the body. Uh, that's one of the roles of stomach acid. And it also provides an environment to promote acidophilus colonization. Now acidophilus literally means acid loving. So you have proper probiotics or proper acidophilus bacteria, they are help, uh, they, they are designed and they're selected by nature to be acid loving and be able to colonize in that kind of environment. And that indeed uh, is what we find in our particular compounds as well. So uh, the acid in the stomach also helps aid the digestion and the isolation of vitamins and minerals from foods and non-chelated 
non predigested sources. Digestion of dietary proteins, about 60% are in small peptides, uh, which are longer chains of amino acids, typically two or three chains long, and about 40% are free form amino acids. Now, free form amino acid is unattached to any other amino acid. And then peptides are further broken down by hydrolysis in the enterocytes, which are the intestinal absorptive cells in, found in the small intestine in the colon. We're going to give you a, cup, a picture here in a moment. So here we have large peptides in the center of your screen. In a sense, with those arrows going up, it's showing that they can't enter into the intestines unless they are either as broken down individual free amino acids, which is represented by the number two, and then go through uh, the intestinal um, uh, uh, epithelial cells to the amino acid state, <clears throat> represented by the number five. Now, in the case of small peptides like di or tripeptides, represented by the number three, they can enter into the circulation or not in the circulation yet, into the intestinal cells, but then those peptides can be broken down into individual amino acids represented by the number four. So we can have absorption of free amino acids as well as di and tripeptides getting into the uh, circulation. So let's talk about supplement basics. <clears throat> so what are the differences between natural and synthetic forms? Well, the L forms represented by the number, the letter L is means levo, Latin for left-handed, are the common natural molecules found in nature and in supplements. The D forms are the common synthetic molecules. The D stands for Latin for dextro, which means right-handed. Now, chemical synthesis commonly produces uh, DL forms or racemic forms that are half natural, half synthetic, and we'll cover some of those examples in a moment. Now, not all amino acids have a right-handed or a left-handed uh, stereo isomer form, and we'll cover that in a moment. So uh, natural versus synthetic forms, it has to do again with optical rotation. Uh, we use examples such as L-arginine or D-L-PA, which we do not sell, but uh, is commonly found in the industry in some of the supplement lines, or DL methionine, which again are racemic or half right-handed, half left-handed, uh, which again is not found in our product line. And then you have rep representations such as taurine and glycine that do not have an L in front of them. That's unnecessary. There are some supplement companies I've seen that use that, <clears throat> uh, have used that over the years, but it is really uh, uh, incorrect because taurine and glycine do not have a uh, mirror image forms that one needs to uh, be concerned about. <clears throat> so amino acids are used for a number of things, but the mixtures are good for repair of muscles and bodybuilding. That's something that everybody I think is aware of in that regard. And some amino acids do compete with others. And if one's taking single individual amino acids, they should be taken between meals without other protein to compete with them. So when is it helpful to take amino acids? In general, without protein, as I mentioned, at least an hour before or two hours after meal. And it's okay to take certain amino acids to balance the diet, but not necessarily need to be done at that meal. Uh, if one is having eating a high arginine diet, such as high in legumes and nuts and chocolate, then can benefit by adding lysine to compensate, but it can be done at a later date or a later time of the day. Amino acid competition, uh, essential amino acids are absorbed more quickly than non-essential ones. And interesting to note that 30 to 40% are utilized by intestinal cells. So the cells in our intestines really are hungry for uh, amino acids to help their nourishment and to help their gut function. And then next we have the neutral amino acids as well. And the blue uh, isoleucine, leucine, and valine are the branch chain amino acids. Then we have some amino acids have some competition because they use a common transport system. Uh, it's uh, helpful to know, but it's not something you have to get too uh, hung up about. Uh, just to know that uh, it is uh, helpful to not take necessarily large amounts of 
of these amino acids at, at the same time if we're going to combine them to use a common transport system. Now, the nice thing about the branch chain amino acids is that they actually have two transport systems, including a sodium-dependent one that can help enhance their absorption. So what are some of the benefits of amino acids? Well, let's talk about the arginine pathway. This involves arginine and citrulline, norvaline, ornithine, and alpha uh, ketoglutarate, uh, arginine alpha ketoglutarate, AAKG. <clears throat> now, arginine is considered conditionally essential, essential for children, but conditionally essential in adults. So it is involved in protein and creatine synthesis and muscle metabolism, uh, cardiovascular health via the nitric oxide production, the NO, nitrogen balance, and the detoxification of ammonia, which is a more important part of the whole uh, urea cycle that arginine is involved with with some of the other amino acids, healing and repair of skin and connective tissues, and also as a hormone precursor to glucagon and insulin, which are involved in blood sugar regulation <clears throat> and in growth hormone. Now, citrulline is a very close uh, cousin uh, to arginine ornithine. It's uh, found in the, that, the urea cycle. So arginine, ornithine, and citrulline all uh, kind of uh, are involved in a cycle of breakdown and metabolism of one into the other <clears throat> that can be helpful. Interesting thing about arginine or that uh, citrulline is that it can double the plasma arginine ornithine levels, which uh, in some studies shows that it works better than arginine. And again, all of these um, do support detoxification, arginine ornithine and citrulline. Now, norvaline is an analog of L-valine and it does support nitric oxide levels, that's NO. Now enzymes break down L-arginine into citrulline that releases NO, but interesting thing about L-norvaline is it uniquely inhibits the breakdown of L-arginine by arginase, an enzyme that allows for increasing the NO production up to 60%. And again, nitric oxide is involved in so many aspects of, uh, of our normal body chemistry, supporting muscle growth and strength and stamina. It can help with augmenting blood flow to cardiovascular tissues and smooth muscle. Helps in the regulation of gastric nutrient uptake. It helps oxygenate muscle for better pumps and endurance, and also helps in the regulation of blood pressure. Now, uh, L-ornithine is, uh, as I mentioned earlier, is an amino acid in the arginine pathway. It's an important intermediate in the urea cycle that again aids the body's uh, detoxification of ammonia into urea. <clears throat> uh, ammonia is quite toxic to the body and urea is how we excrete it through our kidneys um, and through our bladder. Cardiovascular support uh, also involved uh, via in nitric oxide production and does support detoxification in the uh, pathway of the body in the, via the urea cycle. So arginine combined with alpha ketoglutarate is the AAKG involved in energy production as well as amino acid metabolism and protein synthesis. And again, helps rid the body of excess ammonia and in, involved in healthy immune system function. So let's talk about bodybuilding, which is what a lot of people automatically think of when they think of amino acids. There are some that are stand out, uh, branch chain amino acids, beta alanine, L-arginine, L-carnosine, L-glutamine, L-proline, and L-threonine, and aspartic acid, which we'll cover again in some more detail. <clears throat> branch chain amino acids are essential that's the leucine, isoleucine, and valine that we talked about a moment ago. They are very abundant in muscles. 35% of the essential amino acids in muscles are made up of these three. So out of the nine essential amino acids, these three are key. And they also represent 40% of all the essential amino acids required in a healthy diet, which is, helps to explain the popularity of branched chain amino acid supplements. So breaking it down a little bit more, the L-leucine is unique as a signaling molecule because it helps to regulate 
optimal skeletal muscle protein synthesis. So this is a key uh, cog in the wheel, so to speak. And it helps to maintain healthy glucose metabolism and insulin function as well. It may help to promote the use of fat for energy and helps to support growth hormone production. Now, here's where I uh, kind of get into more of the details about uh, muscle uh, protein synthesis. So the early research indicates that two to three grams of leucine are required to maximize uh, skeletal muscle protein synthesis, or MPS. However, once this threshold has been reached, a protein's beneficial effects on muscle protein synthesis effectively plateaus. So as an example here, consuming 40 grams of egg protein, which would be a heck of a lot, did not enhance muscle protein synthesis over having 20 grams of egg protein, which is equivalent to about three eggs, uh, which uh, helps to put things into perspective um, in terms of how much we may need versus what some people think they may need. And then at lower doses of protein, like 10% of your total energy needs, animal sources stimulate muscle protein synthesis to a greater degree than plant sources. But if you get to uh, higher uh, doses, like 30% of energy, both plant and animal-based proteins have reached the amount of leucine needed to optimize muscle protein synthesis, which results in no differences between the sources. So again, an argument in favor of plant proteins and pea proteins and other ones like that, that can be helpful. So again, another one of the branched chain amino acids is L-isoleucine, involved in energy, blood sugar maintenance, hemoglobin production, and tissue repair. And also tissue repair for L-valine, nitrogen balance, and muscle tissue. Now let's talk about beta alanine. And we're going to uh, cover, uh, as, as a precursor of carnosine, and we're going to cover carnosine in a moment. Uh, the uh, nice thing about beta alanine, and it's popular in bodybuilding circles and among athletes, is that it delays fatigue. And it helps to do this by maintaining optimal muscular pH. And it helps to support muscle building exercise and can be used by vegetarians and bodybuilders as well and can help aid a more rapid recovery time. So L-carnosine is a dipeptide. Again, a combination of two amino acids is a dipeptide. So the combination of L-alanine and L-histidine. So high concentrations are found in skeletal muscle tissue and it helps to stabilize cellular membranes and may be conditionally essential for vegetarians and bodybuilders that have possibly a greater need when they're doing a lot of intense exercise. Now let's talk about L-glutamine, which is a very popular common uh, amino acid. It helps to maintain a positive nitrogen balance. It is conditionally essential. So uh, if you uh, are working out and stressing the system out a lot uh, in terms of uh, intense exercise, it can be uh, helpful beyond what the body can make. So this is where external sources, mental sources of glutamine can be helpful. It also aids the rapidly growing cells of the immune system and the lymphocytes and uh, the intestinal cells, which are the enterocytes. Remember that picture that we had of the uh, protein and amino acid absorption into the body? Those are the enterocytes, the cells that we absorb nutrients through. It also helps in the regulation of acid-base balance, the pH balance and helps to transport nitrogen through the body. And also a helpful brain fuel as well. Now let's talk about L-proline, which is essential for the synthesis of collagen. And collagen is the most abundant protein in mammals. And it is a main structural protein that constitutes all human connective tissues, the skin, tendons, ligaments, joints, bone, and the vasculature, such as the veins and the arteries, are very uh, important to maintain, and proline is very essential in that synthesis of collagen, which is necessary for, again, the um, whole glue that holds our bodies together, which is collagen. So proline provides building blocks that help to stabilize and strengthen the structural components of the body. So although proline can be made in the body, 
low protein and vegetarian diets may not provide optimal support for production of collagen. Now, let's talk about L-threonine, not to be confused with L-theonine, which is a different amino acid. So L-threonine is a precursor of L-serine and lysine, supports protein maintenance and production of elastin and collagen, and is used by the body to help produce antibodies. And then we have L-aspartic acid. It's a non-essential amino acid aids in the removal of excess ammonia and supports stamina and involved in the production of inositol and in the production of nucleotides such as the RNA and DNA that uh, help in cell replication and in ATP, which is the energy production in the body. And most of us may be thinking of l aspartic acid as simply involved in neural transmitter in, in the brain, uh, but it does again have number of roles to play throughout the body. So now let's talk about brain memory and relaxing mood amino acids. So we have quite a few on the list, 5-HTP, acetyl-L-carnitine, GABA, L-DOPA, L-phenylalanine, L-serine, L-theanine, L-tryptophan, L-tyrosine, SAMe, and taurine. Let's start with 5-HTP, also known as 5-hydroxytryptophan. So it's the intermediate metabolite between L-tryptophan and serotonin. And 5-HTP is extracted from the bean of the African plant known botanically as Griffonia simplifolia. And it is an important neurotransmitter for, uh, or at least uh, serotonin is an important neurotransmitter for positive mood and relaxation. Acetyl-L-carnitine is a highly bioavailable form of L-carnitine that is able to cross the blood-brain barrier. So it's not only a free radical fighter and a healthy cellular energy metabolism, but it also supports optimal brain function. And it is a vegan-friendly sources are available in that regard. And then we can talk about GABA, which is a non-protein amino acid that functions as a neurotransmitter in the human brain. It's a brain's own calming agent and regulates brain and nerve cell activity by inhibiting the firing of neurons, helping to uh, slow those down. And that uh, helps the feeling of calmness. So it uh, helps promote relaxation, can help in easing of nervous tension. And then we'll talk about glycine. Glycine is a calming neurotransmitter as well in the brain. It facilitates nerve impulses, important for the maintenance of healthy sleep patterns. So many people like to take glycine at bedtime. Again, it has no optical rotation, no L or D or DL forms. And let's talk about L-DOPA. L-DOPA is derived from velvet bean extract, which has been used in Ayurvedic medicine for thousands of years. And it is, again, uh, provides 15% uh, uh, L-DOPA, uh, at least uh, in the product that we have, but uh, L-DOPA is a source uh, material uh, that, uh, it, velvet bean extract is a source material for the natural production of, of providing L-DOPA for the natural production of dopamine. So helps us and feel good um, in that regard. L-phenylalanine is an essential amino acid that is a precursor to L-tyrosine. And tyrosine is necessary for the synthesis of proteins. And tyrosine is also necessary for production of dopamine and norepinephrine, which are very important neurotransmitters. And then let's talk about L-serine. We don't think too much about L-serine. We think about phosphatidylserine, which serine is involved in. It is a important part of our brain proteins that it uh, helps in the construction as well as myelin sheath which surrounds our nerves and help in fatty acid metabolism and it can help in support of healthy immune function among other things. And then let's talk about L-theanine, uh, amino acid found in green tea. Uh, some of you may be familiar with the fact that uh, tea uh, is uh, uh, has a thea part of that name of the botanical source of green tea. So L-theanine got its name because it was originally uh, found 
discovered in green tea about 75 years ago. It does help promote relaxation without drowsiness or negative side effects, which makes it very popular in many circles, and also a free radical fighter and supports healthy cardiovascular functions as well. And let's talk about one possible use of L-theanine. In one study in humans, a single dose of 200 milligrams of theanine was found to antagonize the negative effects of a single 250 milligram dose of caffeine, which otherwise would temporarily increase blood pressure. Now, 250 milligrams is a pretty strong cup of coffee, but gives you an idea of how theanine could help in uh, mitigating some of those uh, effects of excess caffeine. Now let's talk about a very popular amino acid, L-tryptophan. So it, uh, ours is tested for peaky in microbial contamination. Uh, that's something that uh, uh, has been, uh, came to the forefront back in the late 80s when a particular uh, production uh, a new production method was developed by a certain producer in Japan that introduced PEAKY and caused uh, uh, harm to and death to a number of people. It was temporarily off the market in the 1980s. Uh, and it is, again, we test it to make sure that there's no PEAKY or other microbial contamination that would be of an issue in this regard. Uh, protein synthesis, uh, L-tryptophan is involved in. Also, again, a precursor to serotonin and melatonin hormones. Uh, melatonin is produced from serotonin in the body. So these neurotransmitters and hormones help aid in regulation of mood, stress response, encouraging positive mood, promoting restful sleep, and also protective of the stomach and the GI membranes. And let's talk about tyrosine, L-tyrosine. It's a non-essential amino acid pharmaceutical grade, like most of our amino acids are, and it supports mental alertness and the production of the neurotransmitters, dopamine and norepinephrine, which are helpful in the stress response and also an essential component of healthy thyroid function. SAMe, S-adenosylmethionine. So you see the word methionine in there. Uh, we'll talk about methionine in a moment. The body's main methylator, SAMe is the body's main methylator, which is a critical component of many biochemical reactions. You can think of methylation as a process of building up and recycling, building up and recycling throughout our brain, throughout our bodies. So it temporarily can help in alleviation of minor joint discomfort resulting from overexertion or stress and synthesis of neurotransmitters important in mood support. And let's talk about taurine. Taurine, is involved in the manufacture of bile salts by the liver, which aid in the emulsification of fats and in cell membrane stabilization, can work throughout the body, including the brain. Involved in eye health, conditionally essential in children, and also as a neurotransmitter modulation. Also uh, has a relaxing effect on mood and nerves, conditionally essential, as I think we mentioned already. Uh, it's not used in protein synthesis, so it's not involved in muscle synthesis. It has other important roles through the body. And unlike most other aminos, taurine has no L or D stereoisomer forms uh, in that regard. And it also helps to generate and regulate nerve impulses and aids in the maintenance of fluid balance. Uh, the sodium pump helps uh, keep uh, excess sodium and fluid out of cells uh, along with uh, potassium. Uh, so is involved in the osmosis aspect and used by the body in visual pathways as well as in the brain and nervous system where it works together with glycine and GABA as a neurotransmitter. So remember taurine, glycine, and GABA as a trio. We'll be coming back to that uh, briefly at the end of our talk when we talk about a certain product that has those three in there. So now let's talk about cardiovascular energy and metabolism aspects of amino acids. So we're going to talk about glycine, L-alanine, L-carnitine, L-glutamic acid, L-lysine, L-proline, L-tyrosine, and taurine. Glycine is an inhibitory neurotransmitter. It's used to make non-essential aminos such as glutathione. There is only one natural form, again, no L or D forms. It's involved in the creation of creatine, 
and it helps in energy support in the body. Glycine also spares glucose as an energy source, supports healthy skin and connective tissue, and involved in hemoglobin production as well. L-alanine is a non-essential amino acid, which helps aid recovery from aerobic exercise, helps protect against toxic buildup in cells, supports glucose production, and the regulation of insulin secretions. And then we have L-carnitine, many of you are already familiar with. It helps in the promotion of fat burning. And it does this by shuttling long chain fatty acids into the cell's mitochondria to be oxidized and converted to ATP. I like to think of this like the old fashioned steam locomotives of the 19th and 18th century, how the uh, coal needed to be shuttled by uh, the train engineer into the furnace to help ignite the fire that would help uh, produce the uh, steam that drove the locomotive. So that's how I tend to think of this in simple terms and something you could explain to people maybe more easily that way. So carnitine also helps aid recovery from exercise, helps reduce muscle soreness after physical exertion, and again, conditionally essential for vegetarians, and dieters, and those on high fat diets. Now, a related compound is glutamic acid, which detoxifies ammonia and produces L-glutamine internally. Uh, no, I'm sorry, not glutamic acid, not derived, uh, not uh, related to uh, carnitine. I was, uh, related, I was thinking of that in relationship to, to uh, glutamine, uh, which we'll talk about. Uh, we talked about already, we'll talk about more. So detoxifies ammonia, produces L-glutamine internally, and needed to metabolize carbohydrates and is also involved in neurotransmitter functions. And then L-lysine, essential for collagen formation. And again, collagen is an important protein in our body as I discussed. Vascular tissues involved, nitrogen balance, it helps aid the absorption of calcium and supports the production of certain antibodies, hormones and enzymes in the body. And we talked about proline before, essential for collagen formation, vascular tissues, skin, heart muscle, and organs. And L-tyrosine, which we covered, healthy mood, involved in the production as a precursor for the neurotransmitters, dopamine and norepinephrine. So you can see where some of these amino acids can fill a number of roles in the body. And here's another one, L-tyrosine, is also one of the key nutrients for thyroid function, along with the mineral iodine. So the epithelial cells uh, in the thyroid gland uh, help to create a scaffold, and that's a structural backbone used by the thyroid hormones, T4 and T3. And this, the iodine and the scaffold are both secreted into the thyroid gland, and then the hormone synthesis is facilitated. So then the hormones are separated from the scaffolding in various steps, and then they enter into circulation. And so they can be also recycled by the body. Now we talked about taurine a moment ago. Again, it is a cardionutrient. It's the most abundant free amino acid in the heart and skeletal muscle. Helps increase the force and effectiveness of heart muscle contractions. I've been recommending taurine for many years for people. Uh, and it is again a non-racemic, so there's no LOD form um, when you're describing taurine. Now let's talk about free radical fighting elements of amino acids. We're going to talk about glutathione, carnosine, cysteine, methionine, and acetylcysteine or NAC. Glutathione is a major, quote, antioxidant in the body. Again, antioxidant is defined by the FDA and narrowly defined as various nutrients like vitamin C, vitamin E, beta carotene, selenium. Uh, so the term free radical fighter would be perhaps a more appropriate term. Uh, but uh, glutathione is a tripeptide. It consists of three amino acids, cysteine, glutamic acid, and glycine. So highest concentrations are found in the heart, muscles, and the liver, and very critical for healthy immune system function and liver detoxification. 
Now, we did mention cysteine a moment ago. Here's cysteine again on its own uh, as a sulfur-containing amino acid. It stabilizes protein structures and involved in collagen formation. And it's also a very good component of hair, skin, and nails. So you find it in most of the hair, skin, and nails formulas because it is involved in keratin production in the body. Also, again, a free radical fighter and detoxifier and a precursor of and acetylcysteine or NAC and glutathione. Next, we have L-methionine, an essential sulfur-containing amino acid that's involved in the production of creatine and choline and also uh, indirectly into glutathione. So uh, it is a precursor for SAMe, S-adenosylmethionine, which is involved, as mentioned earlier, in healthy joints, positive mood, and detoxification. Now we have N-acetylcysteine, extremely popular amino acid that we sell. And it's a stable form of the non-essential amino acid L-cysteine. So that explains why it's generally more popular than L-cysteine itself. It is still a sulfur-containing amino acid. It is involved in the formation of protein structures and a precursor to glutathione and also involved in detoxification and liver support. So again, uh, very important, very helpful in a variety of ways. So let's talk now about how amino acids can be used in immunity. We're gonna talk about L-glutamine again, L-histidine, L-lysine, glutathione, and N-acetylcysteine. So L-glutamine is a conditionally essential amino acid that helps maintain positive nitrogen balance in an anabolic state. So again, one of the reasons why you'll find that in a lot of um, uh, bodybuilding formulas and protein powders because heavy exercise can uh, use up whatever our body is able to make uh, endogenously. So it can be helpful to provide this from external sources uh, supplementally. And uh, also it could be involved in uh, when people have injuries or burns, a uh, large degree of their body being burned. For instance, glutamine could be helpful in that recovery, uh, as well as other uh, conditions. And then L-lysine is essential amino acid, as we mentioned before, um, helps to reduce the arginine lysine imbalance that might be created by certain foods like nuts and chocolate in the diet that favor higher arginine and less lysine. And involved in collagen formation, and again, grains tend to be low in, in uh, in lysine, but beans are high in lysine. And let's talk about L-histidine. So an essential amino acid, we don't tend to focus on this as much as some of the other amino acids. It is involved in tissue growth and repair and in the myelin sheath that surrounds nerves and in detoxification and in blood cell production and also in histamine production, which is part of our natural immune system defenses and uh, also in the GI tract. Um, histidine is also involved in hydrochloric acid secretions in the stomach. Uh, so we tend to think of uh, histamines as bad with, during those times of the year when people have uh, high histamine production and some people are unfortunately prone to that and they take things that are either natural or, or drug forms of antihistamines. But we shouldn't think of histamine as always a bad thing. It's actually an important part of our immune system when properly balanced. And it's when it gets out of balance that it makes life miserable for some people. So again, balance is important for, for uh, everything. And it doesn't mean that histidine, if one was to take it, it's going to cause you to have, you know, uh, necessarily side effects of a runny nose or watery eyes or something like that. It doesn't necessarily work that way. Now let's talk about selected now products. The now brand is the number one brand of amino acids in the industry with a 24% market share, which is pretty awesome when you consider all the competition that is out there. And again, we have a variety of different options, capsule, veg cap, tablet, liquid and powder forms that uh, give people lots of options that uh, allow them to do what they want to do in their own way. And again, we only use the natural L form. There's no D or DL synthetic forms found in any of our uh, amino acid formulas. 
And again, we also have them in bioavailable free form amino acids and in combination amino acid supplements that we'll cover in a moment, such as amino nine essentials. Oops, right there. So this is a, a blend of all the free form amino acids as determined in the proper ratios by National Academy of Sciences. I've got the leucine, the lysine, the L-phenylalanine, the L-valine, the L-threonine, the L-isoleucine, which is one of the branched chain amino acids along with valine, and the methionine, and the L-histidine, and tryptophan in good ratios. It makes it uh, quite a unique uh, formulation and uh, popular. Now, some people, by the way, will call us up asking, is this serving size supposed to be two quarter level teaspoons a day or two and a quarter level teaspoons a day? And again, it is, can be confusing when people see the little space between the two or they don't notice that space between the two and the quarter, but it is a total of two and one fourth level teaspoons combined together that gets you that about 5.6 grams in the serving size. So next we have Amino Complete, which is a tablet, or actually, I'm sorry, a capsule version of our peptide bound and free form combination amino acids from whey and soy protein isolates, sodium caseinate, which is a milk protein, and gelatin, and combined with some of the free form amino acids, L-glutamine, L-arginine, L-ornithine. And uh, here's one example of one of our top selling aminos is GABA 750. As uh, many of you already know, we also offer GABA in a 500 milligram capsule. And besides the 750 milligram GABA, we also have a, thousand, or a, a 750 milligram tablet version, uh, which is sustained release. And again, it's involved as a brain's natural calming agent, which makes it very uh, popular for promoting relaxation, easing nervous tension. Now, some people prefer to start with 750. Some people may find that that's a bit too much and they may prefer a 500 milligram GABA. So again, we offer options for people to find the right uh, amount that works for them. And we also have L-carnitine, as you know, in many different forms. Uh, this is one of our relatively unique ones is the L-carnitine triple strength. It's a 3,000 milligram in a liquid form, quite tasty in the citrus flavor. Uh, the thing I'd like to point out to people is that it would be best if one was to take this tablespoon and split it up three times a day. In other words, a teaspoon at a time three times a day may be more compatible with the body's utilization of carnitine than taking 3,000 milligrams all at once. So it's still a cost-effective way to get your L-carnitine uh, in, in this form, uh, but uh, splitting it up is also an option to consider morning, afternoon, and evening, for instance. And L-carnosine, which we talked about, again, a dipeptide, which is a combination of L-alanine and L-histidine, high concentrations in skeletal muscle tissue, uh, antioxidant, uh, stabilizes cellular membranes, and again, conditionally essential for vegetarians and bodybuilders. I remember the my first time I took L-carnosine, which was about 15 years ago. I felt a difference for myself right away within a day or two of taking it, which I can't say has necessarily been the case for many dietary supplements that I've taken, but this one hit me right where I needed it uh, for me. Now, we're going to talk about L-leucine, which again, an essential branch chain amino acid. We sell it as a separate standalone product. It is free form, pharmaceutical grade, non-GMO, mixes instantly and helps build lean tissue. And it comes from vegetarian, vegan sources as well. And we also have L-lysine, again, very popular amino acid, helpful for uh, hormones, enzymes, antibodies, and collagen production uh, in the body. And then let's talk about some of our unique products. Uh, Julia Ross uh, had the pleasure of meeting when she came uh, around to uh, our area back about 15 years ago. 
uh, she developed uh, uh, some formulas uh, with us uh, called True Calm and True Focus. And she has written several books, uh, one of them called The Mood Cure, uh, which you can read more about, uh, uh, moodcure.com. And her original book was called The Diet Cure, which I found uh, very important, uh, uh, very helpful information that I've shared with a lot of people over the years. So the uh, you can read more about the details about how she goes about this, but she's had clinical experience as a nutritionist working with people with various uh, uh, things and has developed the True Calm, which again, has some of the important uh, nutrients, niacin, B6, and magnesium, along with GABA, glycine, and taurine. Remember those, that trio that I told you to remember a few minutes ago? They're found in the True Calm formula. And very helpful, again, for promoting a calm, relaxed mood, along with inositol, which is associated B-complex, a semi-essential nutrient uh, is made in our body, so it doesn't have a um, a vitamin designation, but it is helpful. And again, topped off, topped off with a little bit of valerian. And then Julia and us also developed the True Focus formulation, which contains, again, some nutrients, vitamin C, B6, and potassium, along with tyrosine and L-phenylalanine. You notice the tyrosine is uh, greater abundance, uh, most represented in this whole formula. Tyrosine has a nickname uh, that some people call it the natural caffeine of the brain. So again, tyrosine involved in the brain as well as, as uh, thyroid hormone production and uh, adrenal uh, hormone production as well. Uh, L-phenylalanine is in this I mentioned, taurine, uh, grapeseed extract, potassium ascorbate powder, and DMAE or dimethylaminoethanol by tartrate, which is helpful uh, produced in the brain and helpful for uh, concentration and alertness, along with a little bit of ginkgo biloba extract involved in circulatory aspects uh, in the body and as a good free radical scavenger in its own right, and topped off with a bit of CoQ10 to help. Thank you, Jim, for an excellent presentation. I always look forward to our webinars because I personally learn so much, so thank you. And to our audience, if you have any questions regarding the information in today's presentation or about NOW products in general, you can reach Jim or any of the others on the NOW Nutrition team at productinfo at nowfoods.com. And they will be happy to answer your questions. And I, I might also add in a very timely manner. So thank you everyone for joining us and have a great rest of your day.